I think the thought and the life of Panikkar should be more widely known in the in the world, and um, therefore I'm happy to participate in this interview. Uh, in response to your question, uh, I met Raimon first in 1964 in India uh, through the Catholic Students' Union, which was a very active um, student movement. Uh, Raimon was the chaplain uh, of one chapter of that movement in Benares. I was a student of economics in Delhi. Uh, and we used to meet quite often for conferences and for camps. And Raimon was excited because he saw young people like myself and others who were trying to both understand his thought, but what excited him even more was how we were applying it in the social context. Two things are perhaps important to mention. This was soon after India's independence. So the idea of how a recently colonized country could work out its destiny was uh, very important in that context. Uh, and the second thing was that this was just after the Second Vatican Council. The council was still going on. Council ended in 1965. Council was still going on and there was a new movement and excitement in the Catholic Church. And so these two movements of Indian independence and the post-Vatican Council were what Raimon and we students were trying to, to apply. I edited uh, for his 75th birthday a feshrift uh, and invited his colleagues at the University of California to uh, contribute uh, and only one was willing to do this because I said I wanted it on Panikkar's thought. And I take that as a sign that uh, Panikkar's thought in many ways uh, did not fit easily within the specialized context of the American university. And so even though Panikkar was their colleague for many years, only one out of his many friends at Santa Barbara uh, was willing, even though they honored him and respected him, to actually engage with his thought. Uh, and I take that as a sign that his thinking is so vast and so deep uh, that while he was in the German word Wissenschaftlich, uh, he, his thought just overstepped conventional boundaries. So uh, you could call him a philosoph philosophical poet, a poetic philosopher, a Sophianic thinker, uh, but these are not the categories of religious studies, comparative religion, uh, and so on. So the short answer is that uh, he is still being, even now, three years after his death, and even after the fact that he came to Harvard in 1967 and uh, was teaching here since 67, he's still being absorbed. And now this prospect of the Omnia Opera and the prospect of the Gifford Lectures is an attempt uh, on the part of Orbis, and congratulations to them for doing this, um, to try to get his thought more understood. And as you know, I'm doing a volume in the Orbis series on him as a modern spiritual master, which uh, is meant to introduce him at perhaps a more simple level, uh, given how difficult some of his thinking is. Of course, Panikkar, in addition to being a formidable poet and scholar, uh, was also an activist, uh, forming, forming many activist groups like Interculture and but I interacted with him uh, in the Parliament of the World's Religions. And again, uh, his contribution was 
very significant, uh, again, for at least two reasons that I can think of. Uh, one was that people in the parliament recognized him as a pioneer of interfaith and intercultural dialogue. So the whole diatopical hermeneutics, the methodology that, that he had worked out, and even more, his emphasis on the dialogical dialogue, interacting with other people as people, and uh, in the words of Paul Ricoeur, oneself as another, um, uh, it was very significant uh, and continues to be significant for the parliament of the world's religions. Uh, but the other important uh, legacy, uh, in addition to this better known one, is his contribution to something that is uh, less well known but equally important, and that is the working out of a global ethic. Uh, the idea in the 1993 Chicago Parliament was to say, look, if you want to have the dialogue among religions, maybe we can look at what these religions have in common ethically, like the golden rule, treat others like you want others to be treated, um, or you want others to treat you. Uh, so Raimon worked with Hans Kung and with many other religious leaders because it was a cooperative effort. But out of that, uh, this declaration, which is still having an impact uh, and has gone all the way to the United Nations, and now the United Nations is saying that uh, it might be good to look at uh, how the Declaration of Human Rights in 1945, uh, a very important document, the Universal Declaration, might have a supplement having to do with ethics and religion. And to some extent, uh, what Raimon did together with others in the 1993 Parliament mm -hmm. laid the foundation for that continuing effort of a global ethic.